If you find yourself being worried about why man is not texting you or why he's not showing up for you, why he's not committing to you, then he might be triggering your abandonment wound. All of us have abandonment issues to some degree. Hi, my name is Nara, and here we're discussing astrology, spirituality, psychology, law of attraction, law of assumption, nervous system regulation, specifically focus on relationships because that was the hardest aspect of my life to deal with for my entire life. And I realized that it all comes down to our childhood traumas that get triggered in relationship whether you're committed to a person whether you're not committed but as long as you are attracted to a person he can or she can trigger your abandonment wound now when it comes to abandonment issues it doesn't have to be anything drastic or extreme meaning your childhood doesn't have to be where your father left your mother left for you to experience an abandonment wound. Realize that for a child up to seven years old, he perceives things differently. A child is attached to parents, right? And even the smallest thing, such as, I'll bring up my example from my childhood, upon discovering that uh, when I was doing my shadow work, I was shocked at how much that very experience was actually causing, you know, triggering, triggering my abandonment wound. Once I identified what was causing that abandonment issues became way easier to deal with so i remember when i was in a kindergarten um my mom was working my dad was working older sisters took care of me her parents were supposed to come pick us up at five but my parents were never on time ever which made me the same way <laughs> i'm never on time ever see that's the aspect that personality aspect that my parents had both actually now i'm always late <laughs> But that's besides the point, right? So they would be always late. But for a kid to have to stay until like 5.30 p.m. And the kids who stayed until 5.30 p.m. were only kids of alcoholics and families that were not that good. I'm coming from Soviet Russia. Alcoholics, we have them, right? You guys know vodka and whatever. But the thing is that it made me feel weird. It made, That's what created abandonment issues. I felt so lonely. I felt like, am I not enough? Why didn't they come and pick me up? Because good kids were picked up at 5, exactly. But bad kids stayed until 5.30. So this created for me this thinking that maybe I'm not enough for them to pick me up at the right time. And this created abandonment wound. And usually when it comes to abandonment, it doesn't, like I said, right? It doesn't have to be drastic. It can be like as simple as... You know, you went with your mom to a shopping mall and then you can't find her. That will trigger abandonment wound. And that very emotional memory, painful emotion, is still there. We suppress it and then it pops up when people trigger it. But we don't even know that it's coming from those experiences and we project it onto other people. So that's why I'm trying to tell you guys to look inside of yourself. And if you feel insecure, if you want to chase a person upon them ghosting or not showing up for you, or you want to over explain yourself, or you want to, you know, prove yourself, this is an abandonment wound. Or if you're thinking that, oh, I should do this and that for, for this person so that they don't leave me. That was my um, trauma response. Like I would, I was ready to give everything I had just for a person not to leave so that they don't revive that painful memory, like emotion. But once I revived all those many situations that I experienced in my childhood that are contributing to this abandonment wound, I just stopped looking at it the same way. I stopped allowing this trigger to run my behavior, run my consciousness, run my thinking. And my relationship dynamics shifted because of that. Now, when I entered relationships with my husband, I told him about all of my abandonment wounds. Only when I was comfortable to do so. And mind you, I don't tell anything about myself unless a person is vulnerable first. So never just open up to anybody unless they are opening up to you. You need to listen to your intuition whether they're lying to you or not. Because I had so many clients who would get trapped by some men who were crying and using their emotions just to manipulate so it all comes down to your intuition but going back to your abandonment wound not do not project it onto other people do not try to uh say like oh this person made me feel this way that person made me feel this way can you identify why you feel this way can you identify the beliefs why you feel the way you feel because that's the path to liberation 
you will always be disappointed by other people. And why do we get disappointed by other people? Because we are internally disappointed with ourselves. When you find yourself, your true self, not the small I, the big I with a capital I, you will stop allowing these triggers to run your behavior because the triggers are associated with a small self. The big self see it as a child behavior. When those triggers pop up, I want you to look at them from a big eye and look at the smaller eye that is still hurt, okay, that hasn't healed. Meet your abandonment wound. Yes, I'm afraid to be alone. Yes, I'm afraid to be abandoned. Yes, accept it. When you accept it, your consciousness shifts and you will see how it's going to stop fucking your relationship dynamics. Because you can be in a good relationship, a person may be treating you well, but those insecurities from the past and childhood specifically, they may be effing with you. If you're not willing to acknowledge them, if you're not willing to transmute those energies, if you're not willing to reprogram your subconscious mind, identify the beliefs where those insecurities come from. And usually the belief is that I'm not enough, right? And I would like you to go back in your childhood. Can you remember emotions that felt similar to what you're feeling now? It's usually, it usually comes from childhood. You will have compassion for yourself, for how you've acted, for how you treated yourself or how you allowed other people to treat you. And that is the liberation. That is the path to spirituality to knowing yourself, know thyself. You only know thyself through traumas, through painful experiences. You cannot enter light unless you go through darkness. And darkness can be defined differently. Each person will define darkness differently. And whatever it is for you, even if it's like for, for somebody else, it's not a big deal, but for you is, do not overlook it. Deal with it. I'm telling you, like kindergarten situation, it's not a big deal, but it affected me. And I'm sure you will remember some situations from your childhood where you got affected by your parents' unconscious behaviors. When you forgive your parents and yourself for the traumas that you've suppressed, you will stop attracting assholes into your life or the existing assholes will shift their behaviors towards you. So you're in control acknowledge your pain, deal with it, do not project it onto the world, and you will see it will have no power whatsoever over you. Follow me if you like my content, and I'll see you in my next video.